Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be, to be here. Thank you, David, for, for inviting me. Um, this is a very exciting opportunity for me. Um, I know Mark Thompson yesterday said he'd been in his job for uh, nine months and 35 days, or it's 36 now. Um, I've been in my job for exactly today six months. <laughs> so uh, when he talked about humility, I can uh, carry that further. I'm definitely um, going to be humble and uh, say very frankly that I'm also discovering and working on many of the issues that, that have been raised in the Reuters Institute report and that um, will be discussed today. And um, I think in the, in the um, media business, in the, in the world of journalism, of high quality journalism, which Le Monde uh, wants to stand for and stands for historically, um, I think um, it's important to, to know who we are, to, um, to carry our identity and our um, and the message that we want to to uh, and the message and the trust that we want to uh, preserve with our leaders and build on and reach out to new audiences, and this is this is quite a challenge because um, the world of newspapers is going under is undergoing uh, tremendous changes. Um, we're seeing this uh, on, virtually on a monthly basis uh, at Le Monde. We are seeing uh, readers move from paper to screens in a major way, and specifically to mobile. And this is challenging and challenging us and uh, pushing us to move pretty fast and to uh, identify what can be our, our new directions. How can we cope with this? How can we adapt? Um, I've set out an ambition for Le Monde, uh, which um, is a newspaper that was created in 1944. Uh, which was, uh, has been dedicated to looking at, Le, at the world, as, as the name of Le Monde shows. Uh, we look wide and large. Uh, we are not just focused on France. Um, we play a role in democracy. Um, obviously, that's the role of journalism in, in democracies. And um, I believe that Le Monde can become, in this context of di the digital, the famous digital revolution, Le Monde can become the number one uh, French digital global media. And this is, this is um, what we have to do. We have to sort of more uh, than, than, the, than is the case today, break out of uh, our borders and reach out to new audiences across the world who, who read in French, who are interested in what we, might, uh, what we might offer them. And this raises the question of what uh, specific offers, what specific content will be, will, we will be producing. And also, I know uh, Mark mentioned that yesterday concerning the New York Times, but um, we will be thinking in terms of breaking out of the French language and offering uh, content in English. Uh, this is certainly part of our, um, our uh, project. Um, I think um, I, I want to give you just a few, um, the general frame, framework of how we function at Le Monde uh, economically. Um, um, our paid uh, paper distribution is approximately 280,000. Um, we have approximately on digital uh, 10 million uh, unique browsers a month. Um, actually, currently, about a third of those are on mobile, uh, smartphones or tablets, and this per percentage is growing. Um, the Reuters Institute um, report shows how um, um, readers are moving towards not only screens but um, mobile. Um, we have a freemium model, which means that um, unlike the New York Times, we don't have the metering system. Um, this is a choice that was made uh, which was confirmed last year after we carried out a study which showed that it would be tricky for Le Monde, uh, considering the, the market, the potential market it has, to move now towards meter, the metering system. So the freemium model basically means that um, we have a free uh, digital offer which uh, attracts many, many, uh, many, many people. Um, uh, you have to add to those 10 million uh, unique browsers in France 
25%, you have to add 25% extra, which are people who read us from outside France on digital. Um, this uh, free digital offer uh, brings us 15 million euros revenue, advertising revenue a month. Um, Actually, was that 15? 15, 15. At this point, it's 15. It's 15 million. And we have a paywall. Um, which is uh, something that has been sort of reformatted, reinvented, enriched uh, quite recently. Um, the new version was launched uh, on the 6th of April. And um, on this, uh, behind this paywall, so it's a, it's a paying Le Monde digital offer, uh, you find all sorts of things that you obviously don't find on the, on the free, um, uh, on the free uh, digital offer. Uh, for example, you get, um, access to um, a, an interactive map of the world. We're, st we're focusing, we're stressing um, our international coverage, which many of our readers uh, trust us for and, and come towards us for that. Uh, we, have ac we offer access to our archives in a very visual way, um, reader, user-friendly way. Uh, we, have, we give access to spe specific se selections of articles to journalists' pages. Uh, there's more personalization of our um, production. Um, and um, we're still thinking about how to, how to improve that particular uh, offer behind the paywall, how to make it more attractive. Um, I remember, David, you, and I'm going to be picking your brain on this a bit further later, but I remember you said back in June when we, we met in, uh, in Paris that um, Le Monde has a great digital offer, and, and one, of, one of its assets is the, what we call Le Journal Tactile. It's a tactical newspaper, and it's another way of reading the newspaper. Because uh, which, what I omitted to say is that on the, behind the paywall, we offer the full paper newspaper uh, and in two versions. One is PDF with special um, uh, possibilities to read it, and one is the uh, tactile newspaper. Um, and this is something which I think is unique. I haven't seen it in other newspapers, so uh, I encourage you to pay those uh, 15 euros or whatever the equivalent, <laughs> whatever the equivalent it is in, in, in pounds, and look at our uh, tactile newspaper. Uh, it's a special way of reading through. You sort of shift with your finger and you read through the newspaper. It's a more, uh, more of a horizontal newspaper than a vertical newspaper, and it has all sorts of things, uh, videos, portfolios, etc. But as, as David had pointed out back in June, um, when you look at Le Monde's paywall offer, are you immediately convinced that you're going to be paying those 15 euros a month? And this, this goes to the main question that we're all, I think, racking our brains uh, around, which is how to make people pay for high quality uh, journalism and how to sustain the, the economic model of, of a high quality journalism. And I think that um, although the context is pretty, uh, a, 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 produces a lot of anxieties, you know, uh, I think there is, there is a, a, a lot of potential and uh, we should be optimistic. We should, be, we should make sure we can be uh, reactive, adapt to, to how this whole uh, media context is evolving. But there are signs that are, I think, um, uh, that lead to optimism, and one of them is, is the statistics that, that Nick, some of the statistics that Nick showed and, and that are mentioned in the report, which is that there are, there's a growing percentage of people who are ready, who say they are ready to pay for high quality uh, online news and journalism. Um, I think I remember that the figure in the report was it was 7% in last year's report and it's, it's now 13% of people who say they're ready to pay for online news. So you could, you could see it both ways. You could see, you could see it, uh, you know, half, the glass half full or, or half empty. Um, half empty, oh, 13%, is that all? Um, but you can also see it half full, which is it's, it's almost a doubling of the percentage of people who are ready to pay for online news. And one of the challenges I have uh, as, as executive director of Le Monde is to um, obviously um, reorganize to a certain extent our teams so, so that we are mo more focused on where growth is happening. And growth is happening on mobile, on digital, and with um, all, the, all the innovations that digital uh, allows. And the other thing is how to identify the content and the way we present the content 
how to identify these two things that will lead people, more and more people, to say, okay, I'm convinced. If I want to be informed on a regular basis uh, with very reliable uh, information, in-depth, uh, both in-depth uh, content and original, strong, original, uh, exclusive information, uh, then I have to pay. Um, then I have to be, to be part of that world, I have to, um, I have to pay something. Um, um, just a word on, on journalism, which um, there are many questions about what is journalism today? Can anybody be a journalist? Uh, is all content um, in the end um, for more or less similar? Um, I do believe um, that's not the case. I think there are two things that we have to um, focus on on our digital offer, and this concerns Le Monde, which is both what, are we, what stories are we telling, what, um, what is our added value compared to what you can read elsewhere, and also um, in terms of reaching out to audiences and young audiences, which are um, um, obviously more dominant on digital than on, on paper, um, how to interact how to get that dialogue going with, with our readers. Um, there are two, those are two axes that I, I think are fundamental. We're both providers of uh, content and news, and we are interacting with, with readers. And this obviously needs organization, needs moderation. You can't constantly be dialoguing with everybody. But um, these, two, these two ingredients um, create that element of trust and feeling of belonging to some kind of larger community. And again, Le Monde is going to be reaching out to a larger uh, community of French-speaking people throughout the world. Uh, we're going to be looking at, um, at the new emerging middle classes in Africa. Uh, Africa is a continent, of, of, as we know, all know, of, that has uh, still you know, many turmoils, but it's also the continent, uh, I, I think, out of the 10 countries in the world with the highest rates of growth, uh, seven are in Africa. Uh, there are differences between English and French-speaking Africa in economic terms, of course, and many other uh, terms, but I think there's a potential uh, for Le Monde as a highly recognized name. Uh, I think it's the only French media brand, uh, maybe people in the room will, will disagree with me, but I, I believe it's the only French media brand that is highly recognized uh, outside France internationally. It's, it's, it, it's uh, among elites, among uh, the new, uh, new active uh, generations. It's, uh, it's, it has that strong potential. So we're going to be, one of the directions we're going to be looking at is, is, is Africa. We're going to be looking at uh, French ex expats um, because uh, there are, there's a growing number of French ex expats. Uh, officially, there are 1.6 million registered expats uh, in French consulates outside in, throughout the world. But in fact, the number was, is probably two to three times higher. And these people are people who have a certain revenue, who are active, who want to keep that connection with uh, what's going on in France, who want to have that link with, uh, with um, good uh, information, um, and Le Monde is, I think, a strong symbol, a strong reference for them. So uh, we're going to be reaching out to them. We're going to be thinking about an offer in English, as I said, and I see it as high. I, I see it as a kind of best of, a best of of Le Monde, uh, a selection of content, um, both in terms of uh, big international issues that are being discussed. Uh, one of them um, might be Syria, for example, today. Um, what is, what is the debate in France? What is, what is the story? Um, what is the debate in Europe? And Le Monde can bring that to, uh, to a, a, an English-speaking audience. Another axis would be uh, culture, uh, intellectual debates, uh, style, uh, things that France, uh, when you represent a French newspaper, you're also projecting and you're also thinking about how France is perceived, not just Le Monde, but France, although I clearly establish it, a strong distinction between anything to do with the uh, French government and, and Le Monde. So understand me correctly on that one. But um, I think there's a, there's a potential, a curiosity for what Le Monde might have to say about various things. And we're going to, be, we're going to go global on, on that as well. Um, I'm much too long, but I, I, um, I wanted to say that strong journalism uh, is added value. Um, I wanted to stress that quality journalism is added value. It's what you, it's what you don't get uh, uh, everywhere else, or what you don't get um, in the sort of mainstream in this magma of uh, 
of information content comments uh, more or less verified. Uh, quality journalism is something that serves as a, as a reference and that people can rely on. Um, and that has a price. Um, I, I do believe that um, this, is, this is a central argument, that, uh, a central point that needs to be made and that we need to convince more and more people about. It's about choosing what, you, what, you, um, what stories you tell. It's about hierar hierar uh, make, making sure that the hierarchy among those, uh, those stories is clear. There is so much stuff out there that um, people need to have some kind of guidance in terms of what, what's important, what do I really need to remember out of all, all of this. And I think strong brands like Le Monde, like the New York Times, uh, serve that purpose. And it's using all the devices. It's keeping an eye on all the innovations. Um, we have to make sure that we're, uh, we're not missing the train. Um, we have to make sure that we're anticipating. And um, there are many unknowns. Um, um, earlier, Nick mentioned uh, smart watches. Uh, who knows? Uh, smart glasses, smart fridges. I don't know. Who, who knows where the news will be, uh, will be cons consumed? And uh, right now, we're all focused on smartphones. But what, what, what might be the next innovation? And uh, that's why we have, we have a specific team at Le Monde that's going to be keeping an eye out uh, 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 an eye on, on, on all those um, issues, making sure that we're not missing the new device that tomorrow may again transform everything we're looking at um, right now. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much and um, look forward to it.